Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to take a look at creating layers in Dreamweaver. Now, here in CS3, there technically aren't layers. They are not called layers anymore. They have been renamed, and they've really been renamed correctly. They've been renamed AP Divs. And the AP stands for absolutely positioned because that is what a layer is. It's an absolutely positioned div tag. And what I mean by absolute positioning is, well, let's take a look. Select draw AP div if you're using Dreamweaver CS3. If you're using Dreamweaver 8, uh, come here into the layer layout uh, panel or the layout section of your toolbar. If you're showing the toolbar as a menu, if you're showing it as tabs, you can just select the layout tab. All right, so just get to the layout toolbar and select draw a layer. Okay, here in CS3, it's called an AP div. So, whichever way you get to it and whatever it's called, it's the same thing. Notice that your cursor ch changes to a crosshair. Okay, just click and drag out a square or a rectangle, any size, doesn't matter. This rectangle is absolutely positioned. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to just fill this with a green, all right? Down here in the properties panel, I just set the background color to green. Now, notice we have this L and this T property over in the properties panel. That is the distance of this box from the left edge. We are 205 pixels from the very left edge and 105 from the very top. All right, now I could set this to zero pixels and it will press this all the way up against the top now, this is absolute positioning, so regardless of how tall or how wide a user's monitor is, this box will always sit 205 pixels from the left and zero from the top. So let's take a look at exactly what we're looking at. Come up here, click on this globe and hold, and then move down and select preview in whatever browser you prefer to use. Here I'm previewing in Firefox. It is going to prompt me to save the HTML document. I am going to say yes, save it, and here we go. Here it is out in a browser. Now, I can expand my browser out to the side and I can keep going out to the side way off screen. And the box does not move. Let me move my browser window back in like that. And the box just stays in place. That's because it is absolutely positioned. It does not change relative to anything. It just sits there and it does its thing and it doesn't move at all. It changes back to being transparent. All right. So that is how you draw an AP div or a layer if you're using Dreamweaver 8. So absolute positioning really allows us to place graphics, text, blocks of color, anything we want, literally anywhere, even on top of other elements. Because remember, you can still think of these things as layers because you can stack them. You can stack them up. You can stack them one on top of each other. You can partially cover other div tags. You can do all kinds of things with absolutely positioned div tags. So here we go. We've, drew, we've drawn our first div tag and let's actually do something with it. Now in order to select a div tag and start making changes to it, just move over the edge. You can see the whole thing sort of highlights. You get this quad crosshair arrow and select that and you've selected the entire div. Now there are some properties you can change down here in the properties panel, but I almost never use this properties panel when I'm making changes. You saw me use it a minute ago just to make a quick background color change. But the real power of divs lies in the fact that you can apply tons of CSS styles to them. And CSS really can do a lot more when it comes to styling than HTML can even touch. It can just do way, way more. So using divs is really a really, really good way of designing your site or placing elements or whatever. Let's take a look at some of the things we can do with divs. All these CSS styles can be applied using the CSS styles panel. Sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? You can get to that CSS styles panel by going window, CSS styles. And that is right here. I have it open underneath the CSS panel. All right, now here we have this little tag called style. Notice also that this says all rules. I'm going to expand that style and we have here AP div one. Now notice that when we select this div tag down here in the properties panel, we also have AP div one. 
That is the CSS rule that is applied to this div tag. All right, now down here it says properties for AP div one. We can't see them because our application and tag inspector panels are in the way. Let's move this down, I'm just clicking on the border and when that double arrow comes up, you can see now we can see our properties. You can see the height of our div is 200 pixels. If we look to the properties panel, the height, 200 pixels. It is 205 pixels from the left edge. We can edit that in here by simply clicking left and then clicking on the 205 pixels and we can type anything we want. We can say 100, okay? And when we click down here in position, it moves over. Okay, we can also edit whether or not it's pixels, points, inches, centimeters, millimeters, etc., 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 even percentages. We're gonna stick with pixels. Okay, positioning here is absolute. Now you can change this to fixed, relative, static, and inherit positioning, but we're dealing with AP div tags, so we're gonna stick to absolute positioning for now. But just bear in mind that you can allow for other types of positioning, which can be quite useful at times. From the top, we're gonna move this down maybe 15 pixels off the top, and we are going to throw some images inside of this uh, div tag. So really, I want the height of the div tag to be quite a bit smaller. Let's try 50. And I'm just gonna hit the tab key, and there we go. We moved down to the left, and that applies our changes. I'm gonna look down here at my files panel, and under images, under button bar, I have a bunch of buttons. I'm just gonna start dragging these out, dropping them into this div. It's gonna ask me for alternate text. I'm gonna say home btn. Drag this one out, and I believe this is called travel btn. And I'm gonna skip putting alternate text on the rest of these for the sake of time. And there we go, we have five buttons that we've just lined up inside that div tag. Now the thing is, these buttons are just sitting in the top left hand corner of the div. Let's do something with them. Let's position these buttons in the, in the center of this tag here. And then we will look at adding a background color. So let's select this here, which is add property. And you can see it's giving us a drop down menu. It says click to add a new property to the rule. So we're going to move down, move down, move down, move down, and we're looking for text align. Now you can think of text align not only as something that aligns text, but it aligns any content that you have inside of that div tag. So I'm going to hit text align, and from the drop down menu, I'm going to hit center. Okay, you can see all of our buttons center. Wonderful. We're going to add another property. This property is going to be background color. Now the color, they've got a little color picker here. I'm just clicking and holding and I've got my eyedropper. I'm gonna move out and select that light blue on the bottom of these buttons. All right, just like that. Now the buttons blend into our div, okay? You can also do some other cool things like, let's try this one here called cursor. And let's select crosshair, okay? I'm gonna save this file now. Command or Control S, or you can just go File, Save. All right, now I'm gonna hit F12, which is my hotkey for previewing in my default browser. And you can see that our div is sitting there. But watch what happens when I move over with my mouse. My mouse changes to a crosshair. So that's something pretty cool that you can do with CSS. You can change um, the cursor or what the cursor looks like when it rolls over that div. Now, I don't actually wanna keep that because that's Kind of ridiculous to have it there for a navigation bar, at least in this case it is. So I'm just going to select that property and then right down here in the bottom right hand corner, there's a little trash can. Click that to get rid of that property. And there you go, we've gotten rid of the property. Let's take a look at putting some images inside of an AP div. We just did put five small images inside of this div tag, but we're going to take a look at something a little more interesting. Select draw AP div and just draw out a div tag, any size. Notice that this div has the CSS rule applied AP div two. Okay, notice up here, we now have a second rule, AP div two. And that is any of these property changes we make to this div. All right, now I could apply AP div one to it. I don't want to, so I'm not going to. What we need to do is calculate the width of this div, which is 346. I'm gonna round that up to 350. 
and we're 100 pixels off the left edge. So that means that the very right hand edge of this div is 450 pixels off of the left hand side. So I'm going to select this div and down here in the properties for AP Div 2, make sure you have AP Div 2 selected, we're going to set this to be 450 pixels from the left hand side and we're going to set it to be 15 from the top just like our navigation bars. Okay, So now this div sits right flush right up against, tightly pressed against this div tag here. Perfect. Okay, now the width of this I want it to be 150 pixels and I want the height to be 100 pixels. So there we go, we have this nice little div. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab image.jpg and I'm just going to drop it in there. I'm not going to worry about placing an alternative, an alternate text, excuse me. And there we go, we have an image placed in a div. Now, this image is placed right inside the div, and I don't really want that. I want to be able to type inside of this div. So what that means is I need to place this or set this as the background image. So I'm going to select that image and hit delete. Notice my div is still there. I did not delete the div, just the image. I'm going to come down here and add a property, property of background image. Now, with the point to file, I'm going to point down here to image1.jpg. Now I can still come in here and type bird, okay? Or I could just type Ned, which is that bird's name. So that's that, and then I could come in here and add the property. Come down here to text align, and I could align this to the right, okay? So there's all kinds of things you can do with these div tags. Now that's not it. Let's draw out another uh, AP div here. Notice this is AP div 3. We're going to set the height of this to 100. We're going to make this, ooh, let's say 500 pixels from the left hand edge. And we're going to make it, well, let's drag it here. We want to drag it so it partially covers our other div tag here. But notice when I drag, I just I get up to the div and I can't drag it any further. That's because over here in AP Elements, we have this little box, Prevent Overlaps Check. If I uncheck that, I can just move them right up and start to cover up this bird picture. All right, so I'm going to leave him over here. I'll actually put him over to this side like that. And back in CSS Styles, I'm going to add a background image property again. And this time, I'm going to point to this .gif file right there. And I'm going to draw out yet another AP div. This one I'm just going to draw out basically right in place. Right here, I'm going to select AP div 4 from my styles. And I'm actually going to drag this guy up like that. So he's covering part of both divs. I'm going to set the height to 100. Left is fine. Position, we're going to leave it at absolute. We want to set the width to 150. So all these images I'm dealing with are 150 by 100 pixel images. And I'm going to add a property of a background image. And this time I'm going to add this PNG image. And look at that. The background of the div is transparent. So the transparent PNG image that sits on top is also transparent. You can see right through to the other images. Let me save this and hit F12 to preview it in a browser. Okay, you can see that these images are all stacked on top of each other using these layers or these AP divs. It's a very cool way to design your site and make all kinds of things much more editable and apply a huge amount of styles to them. And anytime you want to change them, well, you can just grab onto a div and you can move it around. And if you have prevent overlaps checked off, by the way, if you do have this checked off, you can still overlap your divs if you come into your CSS styles. This is AP div 3 here. I've got this cloud photo selected. So I want to select AP div 3. You can make changes by coming in here and manually typing. Let's say I want this to be uh, 415 from the left. You can see that it does cover up my other stuff. And I don't know, 95 from the top. OK, it does cover the other stuff. Now, it doesn't cover the $50 bills here. And that is because of something called Z-index. And the Z-index, you can think of that, again, thinking back to what these AP divs used to be called layers. They can be stacked on top of one another. For instance, this navigation bar, the Z index is 1. How do I know what the Z index is? Well, I can simply select the, the rule, 
or I can come in here to AP Elements and look at AP Div 1, which I have selected. The Z is 1. All right. AP Div 2, the Z index is 2. Now, if I change the Z index, the higher the number, the higher up the uh, div goes, or the higher up the layer goes. So if I select 5, notice my AP Div 4, the Z index is 4. So that was on top, but now because AP Div has 5, that is going to be on top. Let me just save it, hit F12, and you can see that is now sitting on top of the rest of these divs. So Z index is like the stacking order of your layers or your divs. And just like that, I just set it back to two. Now it's back to its original place. But notice that when you select these divs, Dreamweaver moves the div that you're working on to the forefront for the time being. As soon as you click away, it goes back to its proper place in the Z index or the stacking order. I'm going to save this and F12 to preview it in the browser once more. And there you go, back to what it used to be. So that is a really very small introduction to the world of divs and the world of CSS. There is a huge amount of stuff you can do with CSS. It's really incredible what some people out there have done with CSS. And I strongly encourage you to visit this site called CSS Zen Garden. It was featured on my site just a month ago. And this site really showcases a lot of what CSS can do to design your site. You can see here, if I go to edit or view, excuse me, page style, hit no style, this is what this site looks like with no CSS styling. All right, then I go view, page style, current style. Here's what it looks like with CSS styling. So this is all CSS styling that is used to accomplish quite a great deal of design. And again, very, very brief introduction to the world of CSS and div tags. In Dreamweaver CS3 or Dreamweaver 8, if you're using Dreamweaver 8, you should be able to do everything. And uh, that's it. I hope you learned something. I hope you are now encouraged to plunge into the world of CSS and take a real deep, in-depth look at CSS and learn how to use it to design your web pages. It is a great, great way to design websites and web pages. And uh, that's it for this one. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com.